Good morning. Welcome to Edgewood Church. We're glad you're here this morning. I want to open up from reading from 1 Chronicles chapter 16. It says, Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the people. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. I just want you to know this morning that we serve the God of gods, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. That he made the earth, and this earth will not pass away. And that he reigns this morning. And that we need to worship him and praise his name. So let's stand. Father, I just thank you for today. Lord, I thank you for creating us. God, I thank you that you know the number of hairs on our head. That you are the Lord of lords. Majesty and strength. God, you reign forever. You're on the throne. God, I pray that we would worship you in spirit and truth this morning. God, that as we sing, as we raise our hands, God, you would speak, you would move in our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus, we exalt your name this morning. We praise you, Jesus, every day. And today, Jesus, we praise your name. We praise your goodness, Lord. We know your faithfulness. We can feel your faithfulness, Jesus, and we praise you.
to the skies, heavy with blessing. Lift your eyes, offer your heart. Jesus Christ, open the heavens. Now we receive the Spirit of God. We receive. We await the promise to come. Everything that you have spoken will come to pass. Let it be done.
Jesus, we exalt your name. We worship your name. You know, the Bible tells us that it's perfect love. Perfect love drives out all fear. And this is perfect love. What Jesus did for us on the cross 2,000 years ago, that's perfect love. That's the most selfless act that, that ever happened in the history of all of time. Was when the Son of God became a man and became obedient to the point of suffering and death and the death of a cross. And when he died on the cross from our sins, he freed us from our sins. We're no longer slaves to sin. We're no longer slaves to fear. We're no longer slaves to the enemy. He's freed us from this. Jesus, we just want to thank you and praise you. We worship your name. I'm going to ask you to be seated for a moment. And I'm going to ask the, uh, the, the, the board and those that are called to come forward, if they would come forward right now as we're about to prepare for communion. And this is a, a unique communion uh, for us this, this week because for the last several years we've had Rock Church. And uh, so the children haven't been in for us for communion with us. Um, but as we were praying about this and as Suzanne and I talked about it, I was thinking about having communion at the end of the, at the, end of the message. But I really believe it's important. You want to know something? Some of us might think, you know, well, our kids are too small to really understand communion. Now, you know, they understand a lot more than we realize. And, um, and they're not too small to understand because what did Jesus say to us? He said that we had to have faith like a little child. And then unless we have faith like a little child, we, we can't come to him. So we have little children here today that are going to partake of communion with us. It's, uh, you know, parents, you're in control of your kids here. <laughs> All right? But I, I want them to, to partake with us. And when they do, what an opportunity it is for you to share what it means. What does the bread symbolize and what does it mean? It symbolizes the body of Christ, of Jesus that was broken for us. And what does the blood or the juice, <laughs> the, the grape juice, the, the, the wine, what does it symbolize? It symbolizes the blood of Jesus that was spilled out for us and that became our sacrifice. The greatest act of love that was ever known to man. So in, in just a few moments, you're going to come and, and receive the elements. And if you can't come... If you're in a wheelchair, like a few of you are, you can just stay right where you're at. We'll make sure that...